Well, hey guys, welcome to part two of the Silverado headliner. Uh, you see behind me, I think, maybe, it's been recovered, which is pretty cool. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle. You thought that getting it out was a struggle for me when you watched me do the headliner. We're ready to go back in. We're gonna go back though and see how I did it and you can learn from my mistakes. Stay tuned, you're gonna watch me screw it up first and then watch me get it at least mostly right the second time around. What can I say? Just a big dumb animal. Got a headliner in. Huh. Comes in a bit of a ball. Usually it comes in a Roll. I mean, I've never gotten it before. I haven't bought this kind of suede stuff before. It's been a long time actually since I bought headliner, but last time I bought headliner, it came in a long tube, like a like carpet. There's a local-ish. It's it's about an hour away uh, fabric store that actually carries this stuff, but this was way cheaper. But now I see why. Kind of lay it out on the hood here. The truck's been sitting outside, so it's good and warm. Let's see if this will. Kind of calm down a little. It's gonna have a bunch of creases and all kinds of crap in it, and I don't really want that. I still have a leak inside the truck at uh, the windshield. I think I figured out roughly where the leak is. I think it's leaking from around the seal around the front windshield. Well, now you can't see it because I've covered up with a blanket, but up here, right about right in front of the you know right in front of the driver's position. And it's dripping pretty good. We had a really heavy rain the other day and I thought, well, that's a good opportunity. Let me just drive around for a little bit. And, and it was just drip, 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 drip. It was coming in pretty fast. We can still get it on the backer, laid out and glued down and ready to go, put the headliner back in. But I don't want to put the headliner all the way back in until we figure out this leak. I got a uh, hundred inches of it. it. Came in 60 inch, which would have been, I think, big enough or 65 inch. I can't remember what the size was, but about the hundred inch one because one, just to make sure I have enough. The original headliners are not, they're just up against the edge and glued on, which is part of the reason they peel off from the edge. So when I put this one, I'm gonna wrap it around from the, and go around the kind of the top side of it. And so that way it never, it'll never peel off. It's, it's, it'll be butted up against the ceiling. And also got enough so I have some extra to do the visors because the visors were also bad. And even if they weren't, they won't match anymore. This is not exactly the same color as the original headliner, and it's a different material. So it'll look kind of weird to throw those other old visors back up there. So I'll redo those as well. So while this is smoothing out, hopefully, uh, we're gonna get the other headliner, the old one, off and clean up that board. I probably should put some gloves on, but I'm not going to. So <laughs> this was, like I said, you know, if you can see here kind of this front, how this kind of peels up here, it's normally glued just right so stretched out glue is glued right to the edge. If you recall from that junkyard video, scrapyard I went to, I was looking at that other headliner and it was peeling off at the driver's door. That's pretty common. So that's what I want to avoid is having that happen down the road. So I'm going to wrap it around the edge here. This board is kind of just like a press board. I think it's a, it's a it's basically a foam, some kind of composite, maybe paper, cardboard type board. It's rigid but not too rigid. It's a little flexible, which is, which is okay. It's a good thing, because that's how we got in and out. <laughs> but sometimes you can break them, and if you break it, it doesn't really hold its shape. So I'm gonna kinda be careful with it, because I don't wanna damage it. You can, I can probably fix it if I do with some fiberglass resin, but fiberglass resins, you know, it gets kinda heavy. Part of the OEM, this is really light. The heavier it is, the more it's gonna wanna kinda sag down. I don't want that either. It's also had some water damage, obviously. Uh, it's leaking from the roof. If you can see back in that corner, there's a big water moldy stain back there from where it's leaking on the driver's side rear, which I believe is coming from that rear brake light area and it's running down the channel and just dripping down the corners. Primarily in the driver's side corner because, you know, you put a couple extra hundred pounds on the driver's seat and it, it just tilts ever so slightly to the driver's side. So, that's where the water's gonna run, is that direction. Previous owner, probably, or somebody along the way, started putting thumbtacks in this, which is also fairly common. A uh, bit of a backyard hack when it starts to come apart. 
we'll peel this fabric off, which probably won't come off real easy because it's gonna just disintegrate like that. And then we wanna clean up this board a little bit because we're gonna get all this residual foam that's on, the, that's on the back side of this original fabric. But what's happening here is the fabric is actually coming off the foam. This backing here, it's kind of a felt foam material is normally attached to this. So we gotta get all that off, otherwise our glue won't stick. Some of it stuck pretty good, of course. When you peel at the edge, if it's good, if it's good and stuck, peel toward the edge, not away from the edge, so you don't peel apart the backer board. Um, and don't get too crazy about trying to peel it all off either, because we're gonna get it off with a brush, maybe a wire wheel. Just so what I'm saying, like pull this way towards the edge. Even when you get to the edge and you kind of pull it at an angle this way, or which, whichever direction you're pulling, but again, just pull it towards the, don't peel this way because it'll want to peel and separate the backer board. When you get to these holes, same story for me anyway, I peel, I want to peel towards the hole from all the way around. And then peel towards the hole this way. That one, somebody threw some extra glue on that one. I'm gonna tear that so that I can tear back this way. Where you have these pieces that clamp up like this front console, this upper console, it's gonna be a little tougher. That's been held up there for a long time, so it's gonna be glued real good, which is fine, except when we try to take it off. This can be tedious and uh, kind of boring and annoying. I'm sure it's boring to watch. So there's a tendency, or will be a, a, a tendency to go fast. Avoid that tendency. Slower you, you know, I know it takes, can take a while if you go super slow, but better to go slow and not ruin anything than to go fast and break the board or whatever. These things, these boards are kind of hard to come by. If you break them, just be careful. They can be expensive anyway. They're probably not hard to come by. They're just a little pricey. Again, the Firebird one was the same same kind of problem where the aftermarket ones, careful, there, are uh, fiberglass, and so they're or some kind of resin, and they're heavier, and they don't work as good. The OEM ones just work better. So try to save your OEM one if you can. There. Okay, we got most of it off. The rest of it will come off when we get the backer stuff off. Now. Some of this stuff will come off, depends on how bad it is. If it's real bad, and it just sort of like explodes in your fingers, it'll just come off with a stiff bristle brush. I'm gonna try that first, because that's safer. If that doesn't work, slide back a little bit. Uh, we'll get the drill out with a wire brush on it. If you can get something a little less aggressive than that, that'd be good, I think. Just not confident. And the strength of this board, it just go grinding on it with a grinding with a wire brush. But I'm gonna try with just a regular hand brush. It will take a lot longer, of course. Again, fight that urge to go faster than you have to, or faster than you should, I guess I should say. Where is that brush at? So this is just an old, old, super old wire brush. Um, I'm gonna take these pins out. Let's get those out. Watch the fingers. Okay, all right, now they're out. This is just an old wire brush. We'll see how this works to start with. It might be good enough. It's a big board, so, you know, if this works, I may get the drill out and just try to go at a really low speed. I'm just trying to see how this, uh, you know, if I need a plastic bristle brush or if this wire one will work. So this corner, this is the driver's side corner, which is where it's leaking here. 
So this is a little bit rough. It's kind of peeling up a little bit. So it looks like it is a, it's a foam with a, with a bit of a fiberglass paper resin surround. So um, before I get too far into this, I'll probably throw a little bit of glue to glue that back together because it's peeling apart it's from, the, from the water damage. But I also want to be careful with a, with a brush here. This is kind of flimsy. So just like when I peeled the fabric off and peel towards an edge, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brush towards an edge, not from, and have one of these bristles catch the edge and peel it back. Okay, so that's working pretty well. I'm gonna stick with this for a little while. You'd probably care to watch that. So just go, you know, get a bathroom break, refill your coffee, and we'll see you back here in a little bit. So it's actually quite a bit harder in the middle here. The, the glue is better. The foam is, the glue is better. The foam is better, uh, it's thicker. I hear the edges, it was kind of already worn off from the water and whatever else. So it's getting harder to scrape with just the brush. So I'm gonna go with a little more aggressive. I got it set to a low speed and we'll just be real careful. Still not gonna do at the edges for the same reason before. I'm gonna get just up towards the edge, but I'll do the edge with a brush. I don't know how much heat this will generate. I don't want again, just trying to be cautious. This may be, uh, you know, I've not had to do one like this with this kind of backer board in a long time, and this may be much ado about nothing. But I did the, the last one, it was so bad that it just, I just, I went across my hand and wiped all the foam off. So this one's pretty good, pretty stuck. So I'm, I'm obviously going with the heavier wire brush, but I don't want to go too much. So I'm going real fast, and I'll come back and clean it up after I. Uh, you know, vacuum some of this crap off of here and can see what you're doing. Don't try to get every tiny little morsel of foam off with this because I'm afraid I'm gonna burn through. You know, if you really wanna go faster, a wire wheel on like a angle grinder would probably go even faster. I don't have one, but if you do, a little bit higher speed, but just, man, just be careful. Yeah, let's take a break here. Let's vacuum some of this up and see what we look like here. Yeah, so obviously it's not, all the way clean yet, but we're getting most of it, get like 80% of it off with the brush, the big wire wheel, and then uh, come back with a hand brush for the rest of it. So this stuff, it's not actually generating that much heat. This stuff's actually much more resilient than I gave it credit for. Um, I'm still gonna, again, resist that temptation to bump the speed up on this and go to town, but, because it will test your patience for sure. Uh, but it is going, and it's going fairly well. So if you have a bigger wheel, it will probably be okay, but just be careful and keep your eye on what's happening here. If you start seeing some of this stuff peel up, boy, stop there. I'm gonna go on a limb here and say one should probably wear a mask when they're doing this. Probably this stuff probably isn't super awesome to breathe in. But okay, so like I said, let's get most of it, not all of it. We'll clean it up. I'm just trying to get the bulk of it done. So we got whatever on the half this what, halfway. I'll come around and do that half, and then we'll 
see where we're at, go back and clean this up. Okay, so once you get to the edges, you say I left the edges undone. Once I get there, I wanna go with the rotation of the brush, again, just like when I was peeling. So the brush is rotating out, never back this way, or across side to side and dig into here. I want all to be just pushing that down and off the edge. So now I'll go around, like here, so it spins this way. So it's gonna, as the brush hits, it's gonna drag this way towards the edge. I'm just gonna push everything down and out. So now I just kind of go around the perimeter. The holes, I think I'll have better luck with the brush. Just, I'm just worried about that. But I remember that on that hole, it was like the glue was extra strong. So, so I guess I'll try the same thing. Just kind of work around the hole, doing, doing the same idea where the brush, the, the, the force goes into the hole, not ever out. Okay, so updates. This edge here got a little bit mad at me. I'm starting to break loose, so I'm gonna stop with the drill on that one and just go to a hand brush. The edges here are real flimsy on this corner as well. And I'm afraid it's gonna do that. So I'm really, really just lightly touching the edge with the, with the brush, like feather as much as I can. Don't go grinding in. In fact, that's really true all the way around. Just let the brush do the work. Let the drill and the brush do the work. If you gotta go back over three times, it's no big deal, but don't grind it down in there because that's when, you know, if you've seen a couple times where this is tried to shoot off on me because the, br the brush caught the board and flung it. So don't do that. That's my advice. A little bit to go here. We'll finish this up. We'll vacuum it up. And then uh, what well, we still have some cleanup to do. It's not all off yet. Something with, something with a bigger surface area would be better. You know, work with what you got. I said somebody, if you were smart, you should wear a mask. Probably ought to wear goggles too. Now that I think about it. Don's taking a smaller brush. Just doing the finer spots. Now I will take this outside and blow it off with some compressed air because I'm not going to pick up so much of it. This is that spot here where it was broken. So I'll just go this by hand. Nice and careful. Really could do this like forever. Don't. I'm not kidding. I could scrub this and scrub this and scrub this and still feel like I'm getting more off. And the more you get material off, the more you think you should keep doing it because it's still taking stuff off. But don't get carried away with it. All right, I'm gonna take this outside and blow it off. So I'm just gonna unroll this kind of over the edge, give myself a little bit of slack, a few inches, cut it with some super dull. Scissors, probably a utility knife would have worked better. Or just some good scissors. Oh my goodness. Fighting a back issue. You're gonna hear me groan a little more than normal today. Slip disc, bulging, some kind of disc problem. And my back and I are having a rather spirited disagreement. Okay, I'll save this. I'll reuse it for the arm or armrest. Listen to me. The visors. The best way for me when I've done this, the best way for me to do it is do it from the inside out. So I'll go basically fold this back 
and do like half of it and then do the other half because uh, it's really hard to manage all that fabric and the glue and all that. This is the glue I'm using. I've not actually used this glue before, this Permatex. I used a 3M product the last time. It's been a few years, more than a few years, probably been almost 10 years since I've done this. So it's been a while. Uh, I hear good things about this. I'm gonna give it a shot. I bought three cans of it. I think I probably only need two. I maybe even only need one. Uh, it says put two to three coats and allow five minutes of drying time between coats. So we'll spray some glue on the back side of the fabric. We'll spray some glue on the board. We'll let it sit for a little bit and then we will squoze it together. The other thing when you do it, you know, you get down in these little crevices here. You don't want to stretch the fabric. So you don't want to have the fabric be laying here and then push it down into the hole. So what you want to do is you want to, you want to, you want to scrunch it into the hole. So as we come across here and we'll get good glue, good tackiness here. And then as we come out here, instead of just pushing this down and stretching this corner, we're going to mush it into the corner. So you want to give yourself plenty of extra because you're going to kind of shrink it up just a little bit. So that way the fabric is pushing in and there isn't a, a tension on it to pop it loose from the board. So then we get to here, we'll go this covered up and we'll, I'll, I'll cut here and I'll kind of cut in the corners and we'll fold this down around in kind of an angle, just at the edge. It will be way more fabric than we need, but we just want to do just the lip. These small holes with this thick fabric might be kind of hard to do, but try to do the same thing here and just see if I can wrap them around. There's foam on the back side of this, this edge, all around the edges. So that might not work here. I may just have to cut right at the edge. All right, well, I've talked enough. It's time to get to work. I'm gonna put gloves on though. I bet this stuff you don't want on your hands. It's got an agitator in it, so you shake it up kind of like you shake up paint, probably for about a minute or so. It's like you're spraying Spider-Man web. Okay, let's get the fabric side. And since I am gonna put multiple coats on the board and There'll be different directions, kind of fill in spaces. I'm not quite as worried about overlap here, like you might with paint. I'm just trying to get coverage as fast as I can and not stick myself to the fabric. I'm also not, if you notice, I'm not doing all the way to the edge because I'm gonna flip this over once I get this all sealed up and then do this exact same thing on the other side. So I don't wanna have that glue set up and then I've wasted it. So I'm just gonna leave the edges and when I'm ready to do the other side, I'll be able to roll this over and then do the see all holes process back on just the edges on the other side. And it'll take a little longer because I'll have to wait for that glue to set up, but that's okay. It's just come out in kind of a weird pattern. It's not remotely consistent. Sometimes it's fanned out. Sometimes it curls back in. It is like spraying like that silly string stuff. <laughs> okay, good enough. All right, we'll give us a few minutes. Look at a watch that's not there and we'll go the other way. I do think now that I've done it and I said I was only gonna uncoat on the fabric, I should have done the fabric when I did the second coat here because now that's gonna end up sitting for 10 minutes. And that's probably not ideal. So I may end up splashing some on just to have some, see if it'll re-wet the glue. Real quick here, I guess advice. If you are only gonna put one coat on the fabric, do that coat when you do your second coat here. So that way they have the same amount of dry time. So I'll mess that up. I'm also, I am down about half a can already. I still gotta do another coat. So I'm definitely at least gonna use two cans. Um, or be into two cans and I hate to run out. So that's why I bought a third can. All right, see you in five. And I'm gonna go this way now.
Like I said, I'm not really trying to concern myself with overlap, although I am overlapping a little bit by accident. Also because it's kind of hard to see where your lines are. But just getting, the idea is to get a good thick coat. So by going both directions, you uh, that's a long reach. Uh, I got long arms. By going both directions between the two coats, you'll get enough coverage. Especially if you do both sides, because like again, you're really doing three coats. Two on one side, one on the other. At that point, whatever you didn't catch on this side, you'll catch on the other side. Whatever you didn't catch in the first coat, you'll catch on the second coat, and so on. Now, we'll roll this over and start pressing it down. Like I said, I'm gonna start from the best I can anyway. Start from the middle. Stuff it in there, and then we'll push it down. So I'm kind of squishing it in. Once you get it stuck, it doesn't want to be unstuck. Push it in there. Oh, snap. I did not have enough. The edge. Ryan. What happened there? It's just not gonna make it. That sucks big time. All right, well, let's see. Oh, it's not going to peel off. I tell you guys, don't do what I tell you to do. Just learn from what I do. This is what I mean. I got this shifted too far this way. I had too much extra over here. And now I don't have enough over here and I'm, I'm a good inch short and there's no way I'm stretching an inch over that edge. And it's already set enough that as I peel this off, it's starting to pull the backing from this here, the foam. So, that is not gonna work. And I'm gonna have to get, I don't have enough. I'm gonna have to get some more and do this over again. <sighs> well, that's how we learn, right? We screw it up, we fix it. So there's the screw up. So I gotta order some fabric. It'll be a minute, probably another couple days. And we'll come back, I guess. It's a good day. See you guys. Oh, well, good morning. Uh, so this is round two <laughs> on the fabric. This is what happens when you don't pay attention. So what happened before is the, uh, I had too much overlap on this side and then there wasn't enough fabric to reach this side. And it was all nicely glued down. And then I had to pull it all back up. So that created a fair amount of mess. I had to then get the glue and the uh, foam that was on the back side of that piece of fabric back off, which by the way, new glue holds much better than old glue. And that was a fair amount of work, but it's, it's not super clean. It's still got a little bit of foam on it. I just can't get all of it off, um, but I'm gonna have to live with that. That's what happens. Not a big deal, okay? 
So I don't want you to think like, oh, see, this is why I don't do this stuff. Look what happened. It's all fixable. I'm, yep, I had to buy more fabric. Uh, I did actually find, so pros and cons here. I did actually find cheaper fabric, cheaper headliner fabric. Um, and it's even a better color. Like it's closer to the actual color. I'll show you the other, the original one. This was the cutoff piece from the first go round that I had, the first one I bought. Much lighter. This is much closer to the actual truck interior, that more neutral color. This was way, way more tan. Just as kind of an example, right? Here's the new, the, here's that fabric, here's that fabric. Here's the plastic on the interior. So, not a match, but it never was. Um, this is the original color. So, none of them are exactly the right color. But I think this will look better. I'm going to redo these. I, I mentioned before, I'm going to redo these as well. So these will match this, and that'll be fine. But this looks better with this trim than this does, in my opinion. Better deal, better color. Cons, it's not better fabric. Um, at, least, at least the way it's delivered. So this is delivered folded up into a cube, a vacuum-sealed cube that's like this big. So it creates a lot of these creases. The other one had that too. And if you remember, I laid it out across the truck to get it nice and warm and uh, it's smoothed right out. I did the same thing with this one. I actually left this longer and then I even hit it with a heat gun and it's better, but it's still got some creases in it. Now to be fair, if you, I don't know if you can really tell very well from the, from camera. I mostly did the heat gun on, on, on this side. So this side's much better than that side. I haven't done that side yet. I'm going to do that here real quick and try to see if I can smooth some of those creases out. The rest of it will just have to smooth out as we glue it down. It's not the end of the world for me. Like, <laughs> it's an old truck. So a couple of creases in the headliner isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to ruin my day versus a headliner falling in my face and in my mouth. Uh, this was, like I said, I'll put a link, I'll actually put a link to both ones, the, the, the original one I bought as well as this one. You guys can decide for yourself which one you want. Obviously the one was much, much uh, lighter, much more tan. This one's more beige. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't do colors. You know what I mean, right? Lighter, darker. So I want to make sure this time I keep it as square as possible because there's not a lot of overlap. Good thing I got three cans of glue because I'm used up the other one. So the other thing I think, this talked about doing two coats. I think I'm going to just do one coat on the base and one coat on the cloth. That way, that'll give me the two coat coverage and maybe have a little more flexibility with, with putting it down because it was even like, if I got a little crease and it tried to get the crease out, it was already Super sticky. This stuff is super sticky. In fact, it's still a little sticky. Some of the surface is still a little tacky from the glue that was on there. So I maybe overdid the glue just a little bit. Like when you see these white spots here where there was glue before, they're quite sticky. Gloves. Definitely want gloves. Like before, I went this way. I'm going to cross hatch and go the other way. I said earlier I was going to put one coat on here and one coat on the fabric. I changed my mind, as you probably have already figured out. Uh, I'm going to put, put two coats on here and then just roll that over. So uh, it's easier to spray this because it's a consistently, it's a consistent surface. It's not level, it's not even, right? It's got waves in it, but it's at least consistent. Spraying on the fabric is actually kind of hard. And then as you try to handle the fabric, you're handling the glue. And I don't really want to do that either if I don't have to. So that way I can move the fabric around and hold it in my hand without sticking the fabric to my hand. Only I notice if you keep it about that six inches away, you get too far out here, you get a weird pattern. The stuff doesn't fly through the air. It doesn't atomize like paint does. So 
if you keep it level and keep it about that six inch mark, it uh, sprays a much more even pattern. If you, get a, if you can keep a consistent pattern, you can control better your coverage. Okay, five more minutes for this coat and we'll start rolling this over. Here we go. So like before, I wanna go center out. I just wanna be more careful this time about making sure I have the overlap on the sides. Yeah, see, it gives me a little more flexibility to try to get out any kinks in it. Just kind of like, put on a sticker, like I'm just kind of working out the, any bubbles or creases that might be in it. Now when you come to corners and it does want to bunch up, now you do have to kind of stretch it out a little bit. It's not too much or won't stick. I'll end up cutting it here. I just didn't get a ton of glue on the edges. I didn't want to overdo that because you can always just pick it up, dab, tap some glue in there and you're good to go. I'm gonna build some sawhorses so I can have it be this high. Sawhorses are not made for, most of them anyway, for us tall folks. So it's, I'm sure it's hard to see there on camera from that far away, but you, you'll be able to tell once you're doing it. You know, like you can see where there's spots that aren't stuck very good. You want to hold them, push them in, and let them kind of hold them for a few seconds to get that glue to set. And then we'll obviously have to cut out this hole, the holes for the visors, for the speaker, like all that kind of stuff. Actually, the microphone. Um, I'm actually probably not going to cut out the microphone because it wasn't hooked up anyway. Probably not going to put it back in. This doesn't have the factory radio in it anymore with a factory wire, uh, Bluetooth. Whew. So, um, doesn't have OnStar, so <laughs> there's no reason to have the microphone. So I probably will just leave that. Uh, we'll just cut out the spots for the visors here. And uh, there, the console hole. We'll leave it at that. Oh, we got to cut out the holes for the handle. That's what that is. The handle goes that's right it's backwards it's upside down both so i'm gonna leave that i'm gonna be a little extra cautious this round <laughs> i'm gonna leave this it says it takes about 30 minutes to set so i'm gonna throw some stuff in these creases to weight it down give it that 30 minutes to set up and then i'll come back and we'll do the other side all right that side looks good there's one spot kind of right here and I'm not sure it got stuck very good and it did pop loose a little. I have to cut this hole out. When I do, I'll come back kind of inside it and just hit a little extra glue in there and then stick that down. So that's not too big a deal. So I'm going to fold this back and do this side. I'm actually going to trim, I should trim this off. My scissors are, I'm not sure they'd cut melted butter. So I'm going to do this with a razor blade instead or try to and try to get a straight line as possible. Cause that's kind of difficult for me. You should see me cutting wrapping paper. It's not a pretty sight. So this is, only has the one big dip. It doesn't have all the weird texture to it. So I'll we'll have to make sure we get it good and stable on this side. This should work better because I never put any glue on this side. I never got to the other half when I did, the, did this the last time. So I should be able to um, uh, get a little bit better adhesion on this side, I think, I hope.
Great, that one's done. Shooting scores. Okay, we'll give that that five minutes and we'll do another coat. I'll clean my fingers off. Give us that five minutes again and we'll stick her down. I'm gonna trim this here just to relieve some of the sort of stress on this for right now. There we go. Just gonna give it a little bit of tension relief. out the bubbles. I'm gonna pull it a little bit. So I said before, don't pull it too tight because you'll pop it loose. But sometimes you got too much fabric bunched up and you gotta pull it to stretch out, take that bubble out. Here, get a bubble right here. Let's get that pushed down in there a little better. So this is where if you spray both sides, right, you get more tackiness to the glue. And uh, I maybe should have done that on both sides. That would have helped here. But I also think it, like I, I have, you saw I had to pull this up and put it back down a couple times. It would have made it almost too sticky. The issue is you just got to get something in here that holds all this down. Am I on the board? No. Let's move that back a little bit. There we go. I can hold here. I'll let it, you know, for a you know, 30 seconds or so, and let that, that glue get, you know, tack up on that fabric. Get the inside done. Again, I'm gonna put some stuff in here, kind of hold that down, let it set up. And like before, we gotta wait about 30 minutes. I need to cut out where the dome light is, right there. And where the console, the upper console goes, as well as the door here, the upper, Holy crap handle and the visors and that uh, connector in the back. So I've got, I put some rugs down. I'm just gonna wrap around the edge. And to protect us as that board that was underneath here has some glue on it from some of the holes where I spring through. So I don't want any glue on the top, but on the corners. I'll end up trimming this off, but I want to be able to get around to the corner. That one's right there. There's always some excess, but I want to wrap that around and have enough to do that. So then we'll wrap that around like that. And then it'll be perfect because that box is going to cover this up. So it's not that big a deal, but you gotta do better on the other ones. And where's the dome line right there? So this one will go. Same deal, just cut a corner, 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 and a corner. around so this is that little speaker spot i'm gonna leave that there's the visors go and uh, now i got this upside down i mentioned in the first video when i took this out about how that wiring was glued you can see where the wiring is glued in here um now let me show you that spot in the back i was talking about too here is where that piece is glued in that uh 
the clip that goes behind the brake light, the upper brake light. And then all these little X's like this are, and this one over here, that's where those Velcro pieces are. So I had to get those out and I'll glue those back down there as well. What I want to do is wrap this around and glue along this edge. And that holds everything tight around so it won't pull away. And then I'll just trim behind this foam and around the edge there and then around all those holes and we should be good. Pull this tight around these edges here. I want to cut there. I'm gonna tuck it in that lip, and I'll come back and trim that off. We have an outside corner trim back away from the corner not out maybe the inside corner and go out from the edges sorry i didn't get all of this done on camera the battery went down on the camera and it was getting sticky and it had to get done i didn't have time to go change the battery so you can you got to see most of it though and you can see what i did I just overlapped just trimmed it off right, right at the foam and just overlapped all the way around the those those corner pieces are a little hard to do because they come to such a weird, it's a curve and a point. They're a little messy. It's not that big a deal because remember that, that handle, that grab handle for the back seat and then the trim piece is gonna cover over most of this. But you can see there was a little bit, actually missed some glue. So I had to re-glue that part. And uh, you can see here, that's just a little bit clunky, but it'll mush up in there and then that trim piece will hold it up. Same thing with these visor holes right they don't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered by that bracket and then that um the clip that the visor clips into and they're bigger than the hole dome light same way that upper console same deal doesn't have to be perfect that is going to cover up any imperfections around the edge so we're just trying to make it so that it doesn't fall out you just be careful with like the very front and the very back and kind of around these nice smooth edges, these straight edges, because those don't have any trim on them in, in this truck. Some cars do, will have an upper trim piece along the door. And you can be, you know, you, you don't have to be quite as careful around there because that trim piece will hide your, uh, your mess ups. This one, that is, these trucks don't have quite as much trim around the top. So you'd have to be a little more particular. So anyway, it's all stuck down. Now it's gonna have that same 30 minute dry time, although we're about 10, 15 minutes into that time because it took me a long time to get all around it. But we'll leave it sit here for a little bit. Before I put it back in the truck, I need to figure out where that leak is. So I think we'll stop here. This video got a little long, uh, longer than I thought it was gonna take. That's what happens when you have to do the same job twice. Headliner's done, it's good to go. It actually did have a couple of spots that pop loose and have a little bit of a bubble. And I think I'm just gonna live with it. Just was one of those where I could not get all of that foam back off and the, the old pieces of foam. It's in the place where I had to redo it, like where I stuck the headliner down, I had to peel back off and put more headliner back down. It's in that area where it didn't stick very well the second time around. Um, but it's not that big a deal. It, it's one of those things that I'll notice it, but nobody else is probably going to be able to notice it because there's so many curves and bumps and waves in this thing that one little bubble is not going to stand out. Now, if that bubble grows, uh, <laughs> well, then you might notice it. And um, there's a way to fix that. Maybe I'll end up doing a video on that later. But for now, I think we're, we'll call it here. Next up would be the finished up the visors so we can get this back in, fix the leak in the roof. Uh, wherever that is, there's one, like I said, there's one in the windshield and one, which I actually think I have fixed. I'll talk about that at that time. And then the brake light, which I think I know how to fix. Bit of a hack, but I think it'll work. I hope you 
learn something as always. I mean, I always say that. I hope you learn something. In this case, I hope you learn from how I messed it up. There, it's one of those things that was actually surprisingly cumbersome, I think I would say. I don't think I would say it's difficult. Despite the fact that I did mess it up once, that was just a careless mistake. The, um, I don't think it was, had anything to do with how difficult this process is. I just wasn't paying close enough attention. And uh, once I did, it went fine. Second time around, went pretty fast. So I think it's pretty good. It's hard to get them in and out, and I'm a little worried about getting it back in there and not damaging the headliner, the fabric, because I did kind of have to end up yanking it out. It scraped some of that old headliner off it, which I didn't care, but uh, I don't want to do this with a new one. It also might be just because it was old, and it, that's why it scraped off. So we'll see when we get it back in. Uh, we can work on that here pretty soon. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.